And like I say, it saddens us. So, uh, dear Lord, welcome up there into your kingdom. Put your arms around the family, around all the friends. He was a well loved man and we're definitely going to miss him. So take care of him, Lord Jesus, and welcome him into your kingdom and everything else. And, uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Because then when it's time for you to go, you can't say sorry, wrong number to the Lord when he called you. And I guess it was his time to go. So, that's my bit um, for Clint, so I'm going to go back to the trailer that's over at Wrong Line. That's over this way. Well, Wrong Line. So, that's... Well, we know where the trailer is. Uh, uh, well, over... Mind. That green one over, the, over there. That green one over... I can't get this right. The green one over there in the corner. Don't complain about my hair. Don't complain about my hair. That's the least of our worries. Uh, so, you want to say anything? It's, uh, it was kind of a shocker. I, it's shameful, I would think. Well, I'll just tell him why. <laughs> you know, the, you just communicate, to, you know, when you do stuff like this, you help you down from politics and all. She called him Any, Anyway, sir. Oh, I don't know yeah. if you can be able to get a picture of all this stuff. Okay. Uh, well, I'll just hold it up let you see if they zoom in. I know you've been, been active for a lot of years here now. Oh, yes. Can we have a brief rundown on who you are for people who don't know you? All right, people don't know me. Uh, so few people really don't know me. Uh, I'm I've been in Austin for a long, long time. I went to Houston Tillerson here, and moved down to San Antonio, and moved back when my kids came. Went to UT and so on. So we did development here in East Austin with a child care center, rental property, and so on. And last time I was on your show, we were talking about building or trying to get uh, support city funds to build apartments and stuff on this property that we have. Yeah, right. That was it. We were the first one to come up with affordable housing. And, right. And we, and it wasn't about the money we had to make, but we were going to make the money regardless. Hello? And everybody told us it was a depression, it was a hard times, people going under and so on. And we still went, got $7.6 million. For the project, and we only needed the hard part was getting the uh, rest from the city, which we could not do, and we had to move on to other projects. And we're back again now with another project. We've been over in East Austin for across from Booker T. We were there for almost 20 years, and we were right in the Millennium Center area. And we always felt that you could do more with the Millennium Center, so. This time around, we decided to put in a proposal to the to the new mayor and the new city council. But we haven't put it to the city council. We just made a preliminary proposal to the mayor to see what he thought about it and whatever. And what we're doing now is trying to get community uh, input of what they think about remodeling and redoing the millennium. And we're trying to uh, we have put a group of black and brown business people together to be proactive instead of reactive. The Millennium Center has not made money. And with a new city manager, you know, they, they will probably look at cutting everything off the budget is, that's not productive. And the Millennium Center would be one item. And I can see the community coming out complaining, you're taking away something from the black community or whatever. But it's, it's simply business. Community you know? and color. Yes, and the man has to do his job. And it's been there 20 years of not making money. Something needs to, need to be done. Right, that's it. So we're saying, well, let's be proactive. We want to take the Millennium Center and remodel it. And in the remodeling process, we want to, I don't know if you could see it here, but yeah, I think you can see it. This show is pretty good. Well, you got it down the way. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. We want to do a, a high-rise. High high we want to take the Millennium Center and make it a high-rise eight stories. We want to keep the event section with games and all that inside. We want to turn it into a main event type like you have on 183 in there. We want to get on one side. We want to put the skating rink. 
And the other side, we want to put the bowling alley, a full bowling alley, a full skating. And then on the second floor, we want to come in with a movie theater and a food court. And then we go up to the third floor, you'll have shopping areas. They're small, at least 23 or 24 small stores. And we're not talking mom and pop. We're trying to make that clear to everybody. We're talking about people who already have a foot locker. Bring your foot locker to East Austin and put it in a building where somebody could get a job, work in, manage it. It's job creation well, in that process. Not to, not to jump in there with something weird, but you know, all these big box stores are closing up because uh, it's easy to get on the telephone and order it up to come back in. That's right. So you have all of these specialty stores opening up. And the specialty stores don't really have a place to go because in Austin, the rent is so high. They can't afford it. So your your specialty stores that you know and the restaurants you find in the neighborhood are closing down. They're actually closing because not because they couldn't do the business, it's because they weren't generating enough income to pay the uh, the taxes and the insurance on the place plus the lease. So what we're going to do there that in those three little sections, you're going to be able to shop, eat, go to the movies, play games, skate, and bowl. And that's all on the first and third floor. From there, we go up to the fourth and fifth floor. It's going to be office space. And we, our goal is to get as many of the community groups and all of that to put their office in the building. Because the more people we generate coming to the site, that's more uh, clientele for those restaurants and everything that's there. And from the office space, we want to say, make it a one-stop shopping. If you got to go to LULAC, you can go to the attorneys, you can go to everybody you want right there on that floor. And we're hoping to get a, a credit union to come in there. But you have everything you need from any group right there on that floor when you go in there. And then as we go up the other two floors, we want to make them like an event center where you could at least rent the space, have functions and catering and stuff like that. And then at the very top, we want to put three restaurants at the top. One in each corner with a nice little bar so you could go eat, dine. You mean alcohol you know. type bar? Yes, the alcohol oh, type yeah, bar. You, know. you have the alcohol at the bowling alley? Yeah. I heard somebody say, well, you can't have alcohol. I said, you go to the bowling alley, main event. All those kids playing there. And how many drunks do you see carrying on and acting up? None. But 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 it's situated to where it's not the type where you're gonna have a beer with your food or something. And it's it's away from the 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 bulk of the kids and the, and the main people having activities. So but we have it to where you can sit, drink your your beer or whatever while you wait for them to call you to your restaurant table. And so so and we're trying to narrow down some minority restaurants that will actually we have several interested that will actually come, lease the space, and they'll be open for activity seven days a week, you know, in that you process. You've already got some customers. We, we already got customers lined up who want to lease space, and that's the easy part, mainly because the fact that everything else is so high, and we're not talking about uh, reducing our rate to uh, from 6000 to 4000 or whatever. We're saying we're going to go, we're going to be a little bit below market rate, but we're going to be selective for what you're going to offer the community when you come in. You know, we're not talking about no pipe shop or whatever kind of yeah. shop you got in there. We're going to be selective, but we have more control. Wigs and, and nails. nails. Huh? Wigs and nails. Oh, yes. You know, so we want to make sure that we have what we need in there. Now, this is the site we're talking about. That's the Millennium site. And Rosewood Avenue. And Walnut Street in Hargrave. Hargrave, there. Okay. Yeah. And the site we're talking about, we're saying. That is north, yep. Yes. What we're asking the city to do is we're asking the city not to sell us anything. We're asking them to partner with us. And as a partner, they'll put up the site and we'll get the, the funds. Right there, right? Right. And we'll get the funds. To build everything else we need to build. Okay. Now on that back side, that's it's managed by the park department. Yeah. On the orange, that's parkland, and it's under FEMA flood plain. What a FEMA flood plain, we can get it lifted because it deals with everything—the water flow downstream. 
now that we have the big drainage dish on Pleasant Valley and all that fixed, it's no concern about the downstream flow, flow of water. So we could change that. We could do a uh, lease on the land, on the park land. And the same thing with the Millennium. We will be asking for a lease. At the end of the lease, the city gets all of the property back. Now we well, let me let me rephrase that. It's one okay, catch here. Yeah. yeah. Like At all the right. end of the, we're also going to partner with some nonprofits. Okay, we're going to do a ten percent partnership with the nonprofit. So at the end of the lease, those nonprofits could come in and they could take over with the city because we're keeping my will leasing it, just like the Hilton Hotel downtown with the city. They have that long term leasing at the end of the lease. The city owns the property. Built the hotel, probably staying there, leasing from the city. Yeah, but, yeah, but you know, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, so we're going to say, we're going to right? Yeah, pick it up and take it away, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but we're saying, yeah, we say the same thing. We're we're going to lease for so many years. Now we got, and what we're saying is that we want at least five years to put everything together. What a lot of minorities don't understand when they see a company breaking ground on a new development, that company has been working on that for four or five years before they start there breaking there, ground. There. So it's it's too late for you to come out and protest mm -hmm. and say anything, mainly because it is a done deal. And we're trying to have all of the community input we can get. And so far it has been very positive of what they want. Now on the back end side that we have, we yeah. want to put can I come back here just a minute? Yes. On this done deal thing uh, and the protesters, I know a lot of people go out there and protest, and then they say, well, that's, that's the way it is. They did the done deal to, to, uh, to eliminate our input. Well, no, that's just business. That's the way it is. Right. That's it. It, it. it does not mean that they did this so that you wouldn't have input. Yes, that's correct. It's this, now is the time for the input. By the time they bring ground, it's too late. Yes. That's correct, Pat. And nobody's going to go back and try to change. Even though you may bring up some excellent points after the fact, nobody's going to go back and listen to you because yeah. they done did all of the finance and all the paperwork and everything. And when we were trying to build apartments, everybody was telling me, you'll never get money, you'll never find money. We had to go to Florida. I couldn't find money here in Austin, but we went to Florida and found money to support the project. You just got to do some hard work and shop around. It's there. To build this project, there's funds and money available. We just would have to do the hard work and bring all of that money and stuff together to one site. Now, on the site, we want to put 100 apartment units. And that's going to be on the, on the back end of the site. And we're not changing anything. We're taking the same site, and we're putting apartment units on the back end of the site. Right here. Right, right over here? Right there, yeah. Right there. Actually, right close to Hargrave and back is right on Walnut. And in those uh, 100 units, one, two, and three, three, four units, is going to mainly be for senior and veterans. And we're going to okay. seek support from the Veteran Administration, from uh, Health and Human Services, from HUD. We're going to go after every possible program we can get. And in our apartments, we're going to offer the lowest rent, I think, in the history of the city of Austin. Because we're going to go after funds from Health and Human Services. And we're going to go after funds from your Medicaid and Medicare and all of that. So those funds are available, but no one never really uses it because you're under a lot of governmental scrutiny. And my thing is, if you're going to do it right, you have nothing to worry about. And in, that, and in those apartments, we're going to put in there on the bottom floor services such as uh, medical, uh, physical therapy. We're going to have uh, barber shops, beauty shops. We're going to have that as a, like a retirement center that you could go to. And it would be a place that if, when I retire, I could move into it. So we want to fix it to where it's going to be nice. And the key thing is it will generate enough from the rent to help pay for the project. So you don't have to charge uh, affordable, like the state says, affordable is like uh, 1300 or 1200 something like that a month. You don't have to go that high. When somebody's on a fixed income of 800 or $900 a month and you're saying you got to pay a thousand month rent, they can't, they, you know, they just can't afford it. Yeah, we're, we're about there now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
you out of the picture. So I'm saying you got all these different programs like you could go to and get all these subsidized funds to help reduce the rent. And that's the whole thing. Why get the funds and say, now I'm going to make my apartment building more lavish and everything. And I can only put 10 affordable units in that apartment. What if we went to all of these big developers who are building apartment units now and said, instead of putting, you, you, have, you have to put 10 affordable units in there. Why don't you take those 10 units and put it into our project? We just need 10 of them to put 10 units and it's paid for. You see, so it's the ways you could do things without going big in the city for money or funds. Tim Four in that process. Uh, out of, uh, Nam Group. How do you pronounce We that? call it the Nehemiah Group. Nehemiah Group. Yeah, yeah. you know Nehemiah tried to uh, build that wall for so many years and all of that, and it was almost impossible, but he got it done. But now nah, we call it ours, the Nehemiah Group too, because they already is a Nehemiah Group. You know, so we say DMR group too, mainly because everybody's saying, oh, this is an impossible task. The city never let you do it. Maybe the old city council wouldn't let you do it. But I think the new city council and the new people coming in, they have a different attitude. Now, on this here, uh, we're going to have a parking garage. And that's why we're asking the city for that park land at the back on Walnut Street, mainly because it's just a... a hike trail and they still could have the hike trail but by us enlarging the footprint of the millennium and adding the housing now you would need more parking that's it that's the parking you would need more parking you see so that's why we said let's build a parking garage and we can make extra revenue off that parking garage when they have south by southwest in events we could have those events in the millennium now we're looking at upgrading it with uh Nintendo type technology, well, so they can have. Well, you can't. Well, because yeah. a train stop is millions of dollars, oh, but that one oh, little stop. Well, they they have, it. Yeah, but they told us that then they could look at maybe a bus, because it, uh, okay. it's like a, not even a mile away. You could get a bus that'll bring the people from the train back to the site, so we could work it like that. But it's a nice, safe environment. And we want to generate yeah, as many right people here. coming, as many people coming as possible. So in that way, we will generate the funds that's needed. And it's a nice, beautiful site. And for everybody who say, well, it's a black heritage because of uh, the circumstances that happened, it still would be there, but it'd just be even better than what it is. Black developers. That's it. How do you pronounce that? Nehemiah? Ne 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 Nehemiah Group. You see, and what we're trying to do is that once we get the city to say, yes, we will work with y'all and we'll do it, then we'll start bringing in people with the money. We're not going to get there and start building it ourselves. We're going to go to some big people who built these high-rise downtown and all that and say, hey, we need to, you to build this for us. How much money will it take? And then we go and get the money together. So that's what we want people to understand. And we're trying to fix it to where... The city has a, uh, we own 60%, the city owns 30, nonprofits own 10. That's just a proposal. And if we get a nonprofit who want to bring more in, well, then they can own more, you see. But the key component is that we're keeping it within the community and with the people in the community. Is that cool? Yeah. How you doing, yeah. Man? yeah, you uh, uh, just finish stuff catch. I know, uh, South Park Meadows used to be a hippie place to go see concerts. I started working on that place. Before they turned one shovel, what you said earlier about it's all done, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a huge shopping center now. Right. Before they turned one shovel, they hit the whole place and stick already. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I don't quite understand. You've been in this business a long time. Uh, uh, when you say you own 60%, this is Huh? That's the Nehemiah group? That's the Nehemiah group. That's the people yeah, that we have Rocky. put together in for. Because you have to go get money. Oh, I was just yeah. his yard they, they, and what he did. Take you five million I guess he's just aerating it and uh, putting more so dirt. So you get so many people that could uh, vouch for the loan. You see, and, and that's the group. That's what we have to do. Get that seed money so we could get all this started. Because the architect's not going to draw anything for free. 
all of these engineers and stuff, we have to get, uh, get together, get the money to do all of that. And it's like, it's a development, it's a risk. We may do all of that, and they say, well, no, it can't be done. You see, if yeah. uh, something come up, that's money we done lost. And that's what people don't understand. You, you put in your money and take the risk. And if it works, you win. If not, you got a tax write off. There you go. You just lose. You just get your taxes. That's it. So, but what we're saying, leasing the property has been done with the, with dog parks here. They yeah. lease from the state with some non big non profits here. They lease from the city of Austin, you know, in, in the parks department. So we're not talking about nothing new. Right now, the city has a way. Hold on, a dog park. That's. Oh, no, no, but they're putting facilities in the dog park. And they got yeah, the cages and stuff. Yeah, yeah right. And right. go somewhere, somewhere else. Now, with the... Uh, you're talking about major development stuff here because they already got the Millennium Center out there. Right. And we're just Talking changing. Money. You're just changing. And yeah. we're saying you're going to get 30% of the profit from the life of the project. So we're fixing where it's going to make money. Now, we, some groups we have spoken to, they want to say, hey, we want the city to commit that 30% of profit to us. And we have nothing to do with that. That's between them and the mayor or whoever, yeah. how they're going to commit their money. We're going to give 10% to whatever nonprofits that we select because the goal is to get those nonprofits to have functions, events, and galas and all that there to keep people coming to their place. So we're going to support them to no end in that process. But we're going to hire management, once it's uh, completed, we're looking at hiring management companies to do the, all the management. One for the skating ring, one for the bowling alley, one for the uh, amusement center, one for the office space, one for the apartments, one for the leasing. So we're going to make sure everything is managed to where it's making money. That's the whole key right there. And that's our job. To make sure those people are doing their job, because if not, we won't be able to pay our bills. And then if we can't pay our bills, the city come in and take everything, and we are out in the cold. You know, just a lost money. Yeah, doing that something. Yeah. How, how long? When, when, when did you first have this vision? Is this, is five, this years five, five years ago. Five years. When I had my, I had a child care center. And on Rosewood, right down from the Millennium. And I thought about this five years ago. And my goal was to build some apartments, and then after we build the apartments, then go and redo the Millennium. Because then we would have we would have the cash then, and we could have used the apartments as collateral. And then we did this whole site just the way we wanted it with no trouble. But at that time, City Council was not thinking along that line. Of, yeah, it was not they say, Yeah, but they're not they're not thinking along that line. So now with the new city council and it's more equity sharing that they're trying to do, which is which I, I like that the mayor is putting in place there. So everybody could participate. Right. Because they have it they had it at one time where you had to partner under some other big non profit in order to do anything or get anything done. You see, and they, and you got people telling you that you need in your community. And we really didn't care for that. I'm trying to think. It's been, it's been a long time when you were over there last. Oh, yeah. That's when I was doing the apartments. Yeah. I guess that's you know? probably five, yeah. five, five to years. That, that, whoa, man. It's been eight years. And we ain't had you on since then? I haven't been on since then. I, had, had, I haven't had any trouble since then. You know. <laughs> so, so they, it, what they do. What they, I guess that's a good thing. Uh, yeah. What it does is makes people who want to do something in Austin leave Austin. Say, hey, I'm not going to spend, I'll uh, go through all these headaches. A lot of people I've spoken to about the millennium who I know have money and, and they got funds that they could put in. Say, man, I don't want to go through all those headaches. And that yeah. turns people off and run them away right, right off the bat before they even start. You see? Yeah, me having it, that's all. If I, if I look right, that's all uh, a minority type. My Nehemiah group? Oh, yeah. I'm not sure if they're all minority. They do do a lot of work in minority neighborhoods. They do a lot of work yeah. in minority neighborhoods. Yeah, see, yeah, a lot of big developments they have done. 
But the con we're using the same concept. Get the people in the neighborhood who have vested interest in the neighborhood. They've been in business 10, 20 years in that neighborhood, and their business not going nowhere, but they're being forced out by property taxes. They can't afford to pay their property taxes. So why would I expand my business? Because now I have to pay more property taxes. So yeah. Yeah, that's, those are the things that I don't think they really at City Hall are actually looking at for your average businessman. And it's getting to the point where the average uh, businessman and individual won't be able to afford the property taxes. Now, so, you know, so. there, uh, uh, has been, uh, 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 and his support of the group of African American and Hispanic business people known as the Nehemiah. Nehemiah group. That's why That's I just it. preserved it. When I looked on the, you're right, when I looked on that website of it, it didn't really say it was run by uh, African American and Hispanic business people. But no, our site, uh, no, our Nehemiah 2 group, here local. Yeah, yeah. Is, is basically ran by African American. Now, people say it's discrimination. We're not discriminating. Yeah, you, you, you it's not discriminating. <laughs> we're not leaving you out. Okay, okay but what we're saying yeah, is, you know, you're going to have a chance to invest because we have to take investors. So, there's going to be a lot of chances to invest. But we're the primary okay. owners, okay, because we want to keep control. We got some people say, oh, form a board. Let's put a board together. Yeah, you do a board. We get everything approved, then you put me off the board, and I don't have nothing. You know, I'm out of the code. So, so no, we, we don't want to do that. You, you, there, are, you that. already have some African American Hispanic business people supporting the project. Right. Oh, yeah, we got a lot of people, and we have people that are willing to come in and bring a lot more to the table that's, that's community stuff. So, we're not too worried about uh, finding funds or getting functions or getting events. Because right now, Austin is is booked with all type of events. You have more yeah, events yeah. in one week yeah. in Austin than some, than some cities have all year. You know, so. Yeah, tonight there's all, all kinds of things going on. That's why I, I just, uh, uh, if we have a bunch of children's mayor thing, the school board. Oh, yeah, yeah there's a lot right of things going on. So we know. I bet there's plenty of people watching this, though. Oh, everybody watches this show. Man. Yeah. Yeah. They can't sleep unless they watch this show. Yes. So, but we mainly want to let everybody know that we are seeking uh, their input and their support because we're going to have one big community meeting and we're trying, we have an email address on the back of the flyer and on that, that email address you can send in and ask any questions you would like. And let, let me let you see if you can zoom in right. on that to get that email. Yeah, we're gonna wanna, we'll, yeah. we'll get that up. Right. Let me read this part here. Where was it? Uh, <coughs> uh, consists of African American Hispanic business people who have the long standing investment in the East Austin community. They are joining together to take a proactive role in the redevelopment of East Austin. Minorities are playing a very small role in the fast moving pace of the redevelopment of East Austin. Right now, I agree. Right. I know Davino, my little ex friend, they all say that people are here. Anyway, go ahead. You're about to say something, I think. No, no, no. I keep going here. Our landmarks like the Millennium Center, Gibbons Park, Carver Library, and some of our historic churches are all we have left for the next, for the next generation. And you need to make this for the next generation, too. Right? That's right. That's what it's for. You can yeah. really get here your own self. Oh, I got a lot. I got it. Oh, I was bad. I was young last time. I didn't warm me down. Yeah, but I say I'm not, you might wear me down, but I'm not going to give up. Yeah, 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 there's always another avenue to eat, you know, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, we get that Yeah, but we want to make sure that everybody understands. Well, I took it off of here, what I just Yeah, it's all, everything it's is all on here. Is red, it's all there. Yes. And that's the flyer we're putting out. We're going to put that all the churches and so on, so everybody can take it. And if there's any questions they may have, we want them to contact us. And I prefer to email me in writing, and then that way we got uh, some data to show. When we talk to the city council, everybody, we can show that, hey, these people supported the project. And we have some people who are against the project. For example, we have Ms. Houston. Councilwoman Houston is against the project. That's a big hurdle we got to try to get across. And mainly she's told us the height of the building, going eight stories, will block the view of the Capitol. 
And, and I'm wondering I, why, or he should be just sitting there. I just got to say to that. Well, I understand, I understand why, in a way, she said it because she had an ordinance in to stop high rise or certain height limitation That's in East that. Austin. So I'm thinking that may be the reason why. Yeah. You know, so, but she's not running That's again. That's her way of fighting gentrification. Yes. But we're saying gentrification is here. Yeah, we can't do it. And you can't fight it and you've got to adjust to it. But don't let gentrification take away everything we got. We're not going to do nothing because it's gentrification. And you, you can't do that. And that's what upset me with a lot of people. They rather sit and wait. And when they wait so long, everything will pass them by. Now they can't do nothing at all because everything has changed and they don't have the funds and money. Yeah, you know, that's I just politics in there. Man. These people complain and they vote for the same man. I mean, same all the time people that did in the first place. That's right. The same people they vote for. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to replace you there, replace you with somebody just like it. Right. That's and you the get key. more the same. I mean, I mean just because you vote for them. It's an endless cycle. And see what they don't realize in some of the neighborhoods, you have all kind of neighborhood uh, variants and stuff that you have to go by. And they don't do that. They come in and build anything in their neighborhood. But if the neighborhood associations would say, hey, look, by our covenant, you cannot build this type of house here. They won't have to worry about that. that. He says, Kim Brad Mac. He said, and I had a question for Gavino, and I'm mad at you too. Like in Gavino's neighborhood, when they built that neighborhood, the water, wastewater system was set up for that. Yes. And so now they're doing high density. What's going to happen? You got shit and toilet flush instead of teeth. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be right, right. You're going to you have know. a problem. You're going to have a problem. Uh, and same thing with you building, you're putting up here now. I know that part of town now was not built for high rise apartments or anything. Or, you no, have a lot more toilet flushing than you used to have. You got, yeah, <laughs> you, you're right. What is uh, water pressure low? Okay, so you're going to have to increase the water pressure. But you got and, the same old bikes. But they did some upgrades. They did some mm -hmm. upgrades at the corner here of uh, Rosewood and Harborwood. So some upgrades have been done, but then you would have to buy, you put that in your maintenance system, some other things you would have to put in to help with the pressure and all that. Yeah, stuff. I mean, I know you flushed that toilet, it's all got to go a long way. Oh, yes. And right now, it's, it's going okay with two toilets, but you're about that 100. Oh, yes. You see, so, and, and in that process, everything is going down. When it goes down, you, you know, I'm not going to see. I have to hold the thing. I mean, you know, the pipe's only going to hold so much. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, but they all not coming at one time. You know, everybody. <laughs> I don't know. Everybody. Yeah. Commercial yeah. 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 well, dirty football. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, we're not going to be serving any kind of putting, uh, you know, laxative type food that everybody going to hit it at one no, time. No, but I know. was thinking that, that it's, uh, it's, it's uh, 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 going to be a strain on the system for just general everyday use. Oh, yes, which put in the. Design and construction phase, you can address that. You can address all yeah, that. Yeah, right. You could address even on the site work. You could address all of that. That's the kind of you stuff I that. think about when I drive down at Old East Fourth Street. She was a little there. Oh yes. Yeah, you know, now you're looking at that. Yeah, uh, one of those big families even there. Now there's a fourplex over there. Look at is. look at Sixth Street. All the high rise. Here. All the high rise. Now, now did you see them do the upgrades and all of that stuff on the uh, and yeah. the street and all that? Just at the corner. All right. So once again, you know, that corner, you got the same pipe that was designed for for high rise. Yeah. Well, like you know, fifty homes, or whatever. See, so a lot of but by doing something like this in an area, that automatically requires upgrades. And that'll make the upgrades happen. See, for years they could ignore it because it's just a few homes there. Yeah. Let's put our money where these big developers at because we're going to pay, we're going to get more money off of property taxes. So you got that high rise there. Let's get everything to them because they're going to pay more property taxes where these, these 50 of the homes will get in on them at. They're not paying that much. They, you know, So I'll make more money off that high rise than I'll do off those 50 homes. So that's why they get neglected all the time. It's a business, and a lot of people understand, it's a business decision on making money for the city. Now, the city makes a lot of money. How they distribute the money is what the people have to look at. You know, who's getting what, where it's going, and how do I get my share? And that's what the community <laughs> have to look at. And if the community think on that point, the community go with one focus in mind, 
and they give them that little bone, and they all fighting over the bone, and there's no meat on the bone. You see, everybody got to actually sit down and work together as a team and get a clear understanding of what they're trying to accomplish in their community. Yeah. And that's why we want as much input as possible so we could address every issue that everybody has. And most of the issues that was that's negative that comes up, one or two people say you're going to increase the traffic in my neighborhood. And I'm going to have a lot of traffic cars going in and out all day. Are you going to put speed bumps in? And I say, well, that's something we didn't think about, but we could look at doing that. So that's another item that would be good to have or do, you see. Yeah. This, this is right here. Uh, 88 $93 per square foot cost of construction. That's $1,165. I even the lower that cost down. Did you just tell me already and I didn't pay attention to it? What? No, I didn't go over I didn't go because this is the in the proposal. This information is in the proposal plan. Since current senior veteran, the one hundred and five million which is really estimated cost to be about thirteen point four million in total. This excludes the land, of course. That's like number talking a little bit. The above is a place of construction at eighty eight to ninety three dollars per square foot right. cost. The national average standard is hundred and sixty five. Right, natural average there. So if you were in New York City or something oh, like that, yeah, you'd be much higher. So we're looking at for Texas areas, eighty-eight to uh, ninety-three dollars per square foot. Square foot. Yeah. Right, to to build it. But see, with the apartment complex that we're looking at, we can go to Florida and get prefabs, where it's unit uh, well, it's it's a unit building where they could do stacking all over. So that and it takes much longer. It, it's faster. I mean, rephrase. It's faster, but it costs you more money. Yeah, I've seen right. that too. As a yes, as you it see, costs more money. You see, you see housing out of Lake Lake Lake. Uh, yes, lake it, lake. Oh, it has been done all over Boston. All right, but it, it's a, a faster uh, process of getting the job done, and sometimes it will. It it doesn't really save a lot of money because it it. Take this more time consuming, and then you ship it from a far distance and so on. Yes, so you know you got you can look at it from that point of view, then you can look at it from the building point of view of actually building. So, yeah, well, there's always some kind but of this is this is just a, a preliminary, yeah. and it could be done. Now we got it on the high side, so we could do it cheaper than that. But we but we're taking a high side, so we so if we do save money or whatever, you know, if we get money based on the on the high side cost, we would be able to save. So we want all the support that we could get from everybody to uh come in, talk to us and come on the show with us and we could sit down and talk about, you know, your the pros and cons. Yeah. And we would really appreciate that. Because that's what we want. We want all of the pos all the input we could possibly get. So we could iron everything out. Uh, Mr. Wallace, let me, let me text you your name that you get something on here. Uh, your website, Facebook page, or? All right here, let me give you the. Uh, if I had the copy, this is your copy here. This is the website right here. That one right there. <laughs> so we want to make sure we get as much feedback as possible. And some people are saying, well, you're doing all of this and you're building all of this, but blacks and Hispanic won't be able to afford it. And I tell them, and low income, if you go, if you go to the main event on 183 on a on a Friday or a Saturday, look how many blacks and Hispanics are in there. And to play one time, we went. I took my grandkids. Yeah, we're not not the main event on 183. Uh, yeah. yeah, you get out much, do we? I want to get out much. Yeah, Nehemiah, too. You go over there, and it has okay. so many black, Hispanic, Asian, every nationality was in that place. So we said, oh, it's too crowded. Let's come back around about 7 o'clock. It was, it had more people in the place. And, then, and we saw people we used to have here in East Austin at the daycare. Yeah, they all in. I said, wait a minute. You're going to tell me that we're doing something similar and it's too poor for people? The people are too poor? There's a thing that upset me when everybody, when you hear black and brown, they automatically pick a poor. 
I don't care what you say. Oh, uh, you know, I got a black guy coming around. Oh, he's too poor, you know. So well, uh, we don't want that, you know. Well, sir, you know, I don't mean to throw that in there, but we do have Trump president now, so. Oh, now you're you talking about getting me deported, huh? Send me back to Africa. You know. No, that's it. We got one. We got black and Hispanic. Republican figures are higher than ever. Higher than ever. And you know what I like about Trump? A lot of people gonna get mad because you saying you like Trump. Is Trump is is taking the sheet off of everybody, and mm -hmm. he's letting them see that hey, the Democrats hasn't been doing any good for you. The Republicans haven't been doing you any good. Nope. It's all about them making money. And, and President Obama said one time, uh, I think it was a hundred billion went into HUD. He said, why are there still poor people? Living in housing development when a hundred billion went to hood. Look at all that brand new Cadillac. <laughs> That's it. Now you're going to get that black man out of my Cadillac. Hey, you know, why couldn't he get a truck? Why couldn't he get him a truck? You know, but then now get this here. Uh, Governor Perry put out a, uh, had a study done to see. He said, We're giving all this money to help the low income. And every year that number goes up. What's wrong? Why are they not getting out of low income? Nobody really want to address the issue. And that's what I like about President Trump. He's addressing the issue. He's saying, hey, he told one of the guy, one of the uh, Democratic guys, a black guy, hey, look, you got all the problem going on with your people in Chicago, and you're going to tell me something. You've been here 30 years, yeah. and you haven't solved it yet. And he made a good point. How much money they spent? Man, you look at the money they're spending. I mean, millions of, and, when it, and see, that kind of stuff, the American people are not supposed to want that. You're not supposed to know about all that money they've been putting out at the government, you know. So now, now that he's saying it, people realizing it. Look at all the one of the ladies last week, the a young freshman uh, congresswoman. She made the comment that she was so frustrated in Washington because the old Democrats will not let her do anything because they didn't want to make Trump look good. And she was saying all these corporations and all this money coming back. She could use it in Detroit. She could use it with her people, but they don't want her to use it. And that shows you that they really yeah. don't care about the betterment of the people. They want to play political all games. Parties, politics, yeah, politics. And that's that's the part I don't like. That this party, this political game. Well, of course, me and my wife are just victims. We do we can't with each other. Oh yes. And we're uh, we're about like 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 what more we we're increasing we're seeing on the street. Here. Uh, and, and we're in the duplex on the front street. So that's already about as low income as you can get. That's right. And so so you got to ask yourself, why? why don't they come in? They got all this extra money. Now, Look, if, I'm a if, if a, if, if a big money. corporation came here, they'll give them $10, 20 million to put that corporation here. Why they can't you know, do the same? Let's, let's give him a few dollars to make this area look better. Uh, or yeah. whatever, you know. So you got to look at those things. You can't get to that low income back a little bit. Yeah. I know she's struggling too. Yeah, she got to pay those property taxes. What if they say you rent to a low income person? They make X hey, amount of dollars. You don't have to pay property taxes. You can let your property taxes go. Those units you know? the end? Yeah, That's I, I like that. Yeah, because you, right you know you got to give a what big. Because <laughs> we got we got another uh, we got two trees in our in our in the duplexes there. And, and it worked like that because you're going to give a big developer a discount. He's going to put 10 affordable units, not low income, affordable units in his big development. Take that money and let's give that person a break on a property tax and let them reduce your rent, you know. Yeah. Uh, when we get ready to close out, about 55 or so. So just give them, uh, give them two. Give us, uh, we need pictures too. Okay. Uh, yes. That low income thing, what the other people that live with us is low income? The first black police officer from Lafayette, Louisiana. Oh, I'm from Louisiana. He's a historical guy. Then. Yeah, he's a historical guy. I'd love to bring him down here someday, but he can't walk. He's walking towards the Oh, man. He's a little bit older, but he's another one. I can sometimes be talking. You know, I like to get my walk around and get out and back out of here. Yeah. He don't get out. I don't have to get out too much. But it's another example of uh, right on the edge. Mm. And it should be that way. You know, it's not necessary.
It's and not, you, it's you, not you separate. Retired from Bam Bam. He came down here and he did some security work, and then and now he's disabled and out. And there's a lot of people like me and him. Oh, yes. Me and my wife are struggling to keep up, keep our heads above water. And then you kind of project sounds good. I like that idea about giving some kind of rent subsidies. Or, oh, yes. Save on old property taxes, but it helps the community and the people living there. You see, you got to live somewhere, so that's what they need to look at. Well, let me tell you what, let me get out of here. Yeah. And you can have somebody else come in here. Okay, yes. this one. And I'd like to thank you for yes. giving us this opportunity. Yes. Uh, yeah, we're going to keep in touch with you. Oh, yeah. I'm we sorry got... it took so long to get you back home. Oh, that's all right, man. We're busy down here without all this stuff. You know, the oh, like yeah. Here talking stuff. Well, they, they, you know they always have something going on. They always got something. They're fighting for the community. Yeah, and that's the good point. Yeah. Well, man, thank you. Pleasure, and it's a pleasure, man. Yeah. Okay. Come on down here, son. And what, what group are y'all with? Okay, y'all do that. Come on down. Night. Right. You want to get up and put that to them? Well, I'm going to sit right here for him. Santa's been down here with us for a while. He, he's, he's done a lot from a lot of different shows down here. And you're a uh, special needs? Or? Yo soy de, de Sudamérica. Yeah. Y ese, ese parla es el inglés o el español. Uh, most of it, most of it, English. English. You know, Spanish. It's Spanish. It's Spanish. Okay. Okay. Well, whatever. Don't make up. I'm not going to test words. I'm going to test words. Okay. No, okay. George and I and two people behind the scenes. Come stand up behind us if you want. Come on. And Luke, you want to sing. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Luke, you know, okay, Luke likes you know, to sing, and yeah. Derek likes to dance a lot. So. Okay, look, and this guy can play the piano, because, look. No. I've got a piano right in front, no problem. Okay. Yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah, time. Well, well we're going to run out of time here. I know. Okay, look, Austin Clubhouse um, is basically, it started in 1946 in New York City. Um, uh, it's just a... Uh, Austin fun, Clubhouse? Uh-huh. It's just fun... Well, it came out from one in New York called the, the Fountain House. Yes, sir. Right. And basically, it's uh, an organization for a drug of a team who live with the middle owners uh, to just go and volunteer their time and help me out here. Yeah. Uh, basically, the only requirements is that you have to have a mental diagnosis. And believe me, in Austin, it's pretty easy to get one. So. Yeah, well, you need to get one. If you're in Austin, you automatically qualify almost. But anyway, it's pretty cool because if you have depressive disorder and hard, hard to get out of the house, you've got a place to go. You've got a place to interact. You've got stuff to do. Uh, it's meals. Luke is the master of the chef over there by Luke. Uh, but basically, you get involved and do stuff. And not only are you getting help, but you're helping other people. So it's a pretty cool thing. And it's a uh, good thing not only to be involved with but to have people do it. Uh, or if you have a friend that's just can't get out of that shell or can't get out of the house sometimes, get him down there, man, because it's, it's a wonderful community. And I'll, I'll, on that, I'll say this. The secret is community. It's not just doing mindless stuff. It's actually a community, which is what we all actually see. You got a website or? Yeah, what is a website? Did you give it to her in there? Did you put it up on the screen? Or just tell me, okay. That too. Yeah, come on in here and tell us about it. <laughs> now, now we need to get your two. Oh, we need to get a picture before Mr. Bob's mess. Now, Luke is on the staff. Hello, Luke. And uh, Luke uh, is. Uh, this is uh, I'm poking. I'm poking. Yeah, I was outlaw truck driver. You were a truck driver? Yes, sir. Oh, excellent. Well, Luke, despite what everybody says, is a very nice guy, very, despite all the propaganda and newspaper articles, he's a very cool guy. <laughs> what did they say about you? Yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> You're crazy, yo! You know, I'm going to say it on TV, I'm going to send everybody at home. It's sad to talk to you. You know, I'm still watching how you think it's okay. That is true. And Southern, you've been there how long? I've been a member for five years. 
No, but I've been mainly going since last November. Down at the studio, yeah. No, no, uh, no, actually, off the clubhouse. Oh, it's off the clubhouse, yeah. I've been here for two years. Well, yeah, you've been coming out with us for a while. I know you did good help. Yeah. And then, yeah, I remember when Southern came back. I was like, oh, hey, you, you knew, nice to meet you. He's like, oh, no, I've been a member for five years. He just hadn't been in and four. Not yeah. right about, but. Doesn't yeah, matter because membership is free and lifelong, so. You have, uh, right back in the mix. have a uh, professional down there to. No, no, there. Uh, there's no, no, it's interesting concept. It's not a, a therapy place. There's not. Uh, no professional psychiatrist. No. What characterizes them except for Luke is people skills. I mean, especially Luke is what I meant to say. Sorry. Uh, people skills. So everybody that's hired here is basically. Their qualification, they're people, people. They like to interact with people, and they like to help. So that's that's the qualification, not any therapeutic uh, thing. It was founded by people that had come out of, uh, I think, four or five people in New York who mm -hmm. come out of institutions. They're looking for a half the house and be created to decide to create their own community. And uh, that's the past where there's a whole other philosophy about it that really works. It's non structural, it's non hierarchical, it's from up, down. Over the middle, there is a director, she's accountable. But outside of that, everyone from the board, board to all the members to all the staff, same. And it's a pretty amazing thing. Yep. It works. Y'all get any funding from uh, any kind of government entities, any kind? Of we just recently, within the last year and a half, I want to say, started getting a little bit of city money for the most part. And before that, it was entirely privately funded. Nonprofit, so donors, folks in the community, um, and foundations, things of that nature. I'd like to see the city donate a house or something like that to you. They've done that to other groups. Oh, you know, they, they've done that to other groups. I don't want to mention the other group because they're going to think I'm a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's, that, a, that's one of our objectives. Controversial things. Yeah. Yeah. We're very lucky. That we have wonderful people that we rent from. It's a wonderful church. Good people. So high Park Baptist Church. Christian Church. Christian Church. Christian church. Christian church. There's like five Sorry. High Park churches. So you got to be careful about which one you're walking into. Also, oh, well, I know that you guys speak Korean. Actually, Derek speaks Korean. But anyway, uh, you have Korean services there too. I'll, I'll put it in play for them. Yeah. It's a pretty cool church. But anyway. Yeah, that's awesome. Nice of them to, uh, so you have two minutes there. Uh, so we're in the uh, Hyde Park area. So pretty central, right off of 45th Street. Maybe she can get the, uh, the website up. Was it AustinClubhouse.org? Uh, the ORG, yes sir. Mm -hmm. Austin Clubhouse. So pretty sure. Come by, and house. if you'll get a coupon, Southern will sing for you. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. sure. So that's <laughs> a great boy. Do you have a website or anything like that? With Facebook page? What do you have website. on Facebook? Check out our Facebook. Austin Clubhouse. Yeah. Just look I'll it see up. if I can send out a flyer about the show every week. Cool. Yeah. I'll put your logo on there or something. Cool. We got our own magazine. We'll get it. Mag Derek and Southern have been, by magazine, I mean like a little video magazine. That's good. Yeah. So Southern we got, we got some YouTube stuff. There's our, yeah, well, we're not a 45 seconds. Uh, 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 talk views. <laughs> we're not a car. Thank you, Yeah, Lord. Thanks for having us, folks. I appreciate y'all coming down. Yeah. Uh, so I don't to give you a whole hour on your time. You got all this politics coming up till after the election. Yeah. But y'all is a good a good thing to be doing. Yeah. Uh, twenty seconds. Anything last thing you want to say? Well, if you ever want to come by and visit, or if you have a friend or family member that you think might benefit, come by. There's one dollar for lunch. Yeah. First one free. I said just one a dollar for one of the So mm, I'll good. part on I'll party shot at the stomach. That's the best place to. Ten I like how you got. Bye-bye, folks. See you in a few weeks. Bye. Okay. Bye, guys.